This video is to be used for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace individual research or licensed investment advice. Unique experiences and past performance does not guarantee future results. Trading stocks, options, and spot currencies involves substantial risk and there's always the potential for loss. Your trading results may vary. No representations are being made that any software or training will guarantee profits or not result in losses from trading. I had a pound trade on early this morning, but uh, never really did much for me. Um, you know, I, I sort of jumped the gun on it, but not really. Um, based on my own assessment, I, I thought the thing was just going to take out the 70 level and just go nuts, run up to 70.50 real quick. We almost got there, but uh, after I'd closed the trade out for break even, um, because the pound just had that manipulated look and feel to it again. And, so many days lately I've, I've felt that way, so many weeks I've, I've seen where it just looks like the pound is, is being manipulated by, and, and when I say that I don't mean the, the dealing desk that we trade through, but you know, hedge funds, big traders, basically just driving it up and down sort of without rhyme or reason and you know, knocking the little guys out basically. Um, so it's not that you know, the people that you're trading through, the dealers, are trading against you. That's, you know, that's just a sort of a conspiracy theory um, in reality it's other traders that are in the market doing the same things we are buying and selling for profit speculating uh, just with more money so that's uh, that's who I think is manipulating it and when I say manipulating it I mean they're just taking advantage of thin market um, trading that uh, that we sometimes see in the summer that I think we're experiencing this summer um, all right, let's see what we uh, have on the board here. Nothing yet. Uh, so if you have some questions, send them in trader at premiertradeai.com. Uh, still some more news ahead today. Uh, we've got the ISM non-manufacturing or services sector report. So this will tell us what uh, the service sector is, of course, a lot bigger than the manufacturing sector in the United States. That's a, a bigger portion of our economy. Uh, this report will tell us if uh, service sector is expanding, contracting, or neither, the line in the sand is 50. So basically if we, you know, say we see a reading of 50, it means that we didn't have any expansion or contraction uh, for the month. It's been um, moving below 50. So we've seen contraction each month. The contraction, though, is, is expected to slow. So basically contracting but at a slower pace, right, kind of like with the job losses that we're looking for. Um, so the index is expected to improve from 47 to 48.1, but understand that still means we're seeing contraction, just not as much contraction as in the month before. Uh, factory orders also do. I don't put too much weighting on that, but the stock market might. Um, and crude oil inventories at 10.30. Later on tonight, we've got uh, New Zealand employment at 6.45 p.m. Eastern, and then at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Australia's employment, so it could be a really busy Asian session later tonight for those of you who uh, who like trading those hours. So 6:45 and 9:30, the New Zealand and Australian employment reports, respectively. Okay, uh, so here we have pound dollar. Uh, basically, here's what I was looking at this morning. You know, we came up around the 4:30 uh, hour, and uh, I was tempted to take the initial test, the initial break, but um, I just didn't, you know. I didn't have a good enough feeling about it, um, so I thought, you know what, let's wait, at least get a closing price out here. If we can't, then let's let it retrace and see if we take another stab at it later. And uh, it did. It came down, played off of these old highs at 60, uh, bounced up, came back. Um, I actually took it long during this 15-minute candle, I think. All right. Um, trying to remember. I think it was around... Uh, no, I took it long over here, and I took it long here before the breakout because I thought if I waited till the breakout, pulled the trigger, and sent you guys an alert, by the time you got it, the thing might be at 70.50 already. So I'm thinking, hey, let's get in. We obviously want to go try to take out this high, so let's just get in a few pips ahead of it and be there for when it goes nuts. And uh, and so that's why I sort of jumped the gun, but not really. 
Jump in the gun, I think, would have been to take the initial test this morning at 4.30, and, and I just didn't feel that comfortable about the whole thing. Um, we had just gotten a piece of UK data that came in a little better than expected, but, you know, the whole thing for me was, you know what, we could just see it barely break through and come snap back down, which it did. So I'm glad I didn't take it here. And then, like I said, I'm watching it, and, and I figured we'd take it a little before the breakout because on the breakout, like I said, we could get, you know, 30 points in a couple of minutes. Just explosive to the upside. So, of course, I, I take it long here. We pull back immediately, come within a few pips of the stop loss, so I'm already irritated <laughs> with the pair at this point. Then we, uh, we rally up. Um, to uh, 70.22, you can see the high there in the data box, snap back down, and, and it was so quick that really, you know, I, I didn't, I thought it might mess around for a second, but I thought, you know, okay, now we've gotten into the stop loss clearing phase, let's go and knock out some stops, and it doesn't, it comes back and closes here, so I'm thinking, well, there's no point in closing it now, I've got to stop at 80, I'm, I'm only risking 25 pips in the first place. So then it rallies again, and now we get back up above 70, and I'm watching, and I'm thinking, this thing is so crazy. I, I don't want to see some, you know, wacky manipulated move like this. Um, so I just, I bailed on it. And it did run a little bit after that. Like I said, almost made it to our first target of 70.50. It hit 70.45, and now it's back below where we entered. So, you know, at the end of the day, all said and done, and, you know, I, nothing gained, nothing lost, literally. Um but I, I just didn't feel comfortable in it. You know, those are those are the ones. And, and you might say, well, you know, Scott, there was no real support that you set your stop loss under. And, yeah, you're right. There wasn't. I got lucky staying in. But the idea with a breakout trade is either the breakout's going to work or it's not. So what you do is just try to give it a little bit of breathing room in case it, you know, fools around for a few minutes before it takes off you can stay in it. So I didn't want to set my stop at like 95 after entering at 705 because, you know, all it has to do is sneeze and I'm out. So I want to give it a little bit more room. Um, but to go and, you know, once we're here, to go and set it below this stop, I mean, what's the point? You know, now I'm going to, what, risk 65, 70 pips and hope this breakout sustains. So the point is either the breakout, you know, I, I sort of call it a make or break situation. Um, meaning it's going to make it through or it's going to break down and, and, and fall back underneath. And uh, and so it did, you know, it, that's the thing. It did a little of both because it, it just was getting pushed around so wildly. Um, so that was uh, that was my big pound dollar short so far, this or long, this morning. And uh, now I'm just sort of waiting and seeing where we go.